Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Eva. This is Eva the Vegan, where I share all things simple and sustainable living from the perspective of environmental science and ethical vegan and activists. And today's video is just all about things that I make myself that save me money, but also don't cost much to make. So I'll be covering making your own oat milk, uh, making stock from veggie scraps, sprouting lentils and making apple cider vinegar. Um, from apple scraps so without further ado let's get into it okay so for this recipe you're just going to need jumbo oats and a blender and water so i add one cup of jumbo oats to your blender and then for every cup of oats you add four cups of water Then you just want to blend on high for approximately 30 seconds to one minute. You don't want to over blend it because I find that because we're not soaking it, um, if you over blend it, it goes a bit like gooey as if it was if you soak it. So yeah. Once it's finished blending, you just want to get yourself a bowl and either a nut milk bag or a bit of cheesecloth or flour or something like that. And then you just want to pour it through. And just squeeze all of the pulp to get all of the milk out. Now you can use the pulp to bake with. I've made muffins with it before, but I find that I just never get around to doing it, so it goes off. So you can just compost it instead, which is what I'm going to do. Once you've strained your milk, you want to find a suitable container. I have these vintage milk bottles that I got as a gift a couple of years ago. And then we just have these silicon milk tops. And then I have this... Um, vintage flannel that I use to pour it in because otherwise it'll make a mess. And there you have it, your homemade oat milk. Keep it in the fridge for up to four days. Um, it works really well in cooking, it works really well in tea and coffee, just as a very simple basic milk. It's not going to foam up. Um, make sure you shake it before you use it because it will separate, but it's still fine. So yeah. Something I actually do a lot of in my kitchen is sprouting. I primarily sprout lentils, specifically brown lentils. I mainly sprout brown lentils because these are the only sprouts my partner actually likes. <laughs> and also lentils are so cheap. So I have a sprouting towel. I soak my sprouts overnight um, in a jar about probably a tablespoon and a half at a time. I make them kind of three days apart so every three days i'll soak a batch and then i'll pop them on the shelf and then three days later i'll soak another batch put them on the next shelf and so i've always got some ready and i i'm never in a situation where i have too many sprouts so that i can't eat them so whenever we cut up vegetables which is a lot um <laughs> i save all of our veggie scraps and they all just go in like a paper bag um in the freezer and then about once a week or whenever i'm low on stock whenever i've only got one jar of stock in the freezer left i um i make some more i cook mine in the instant pot you don't need a pressure cooker or an instant pot to make stock you can just cook it on the hob but I empty all my veggie scraps into my pot so then i just pour some this is just filtered water um you don't need to use filtered water if you don't want to if you don't have filtered water or whatever you can just use water but i cook mine um on high pressure for an hour and 15 minutes um you can just do this on the hob like i said if you cook it on the hob just bring it to a boil let it simmer put the lid on and let it simmer on like a low to medium heat for about two hours good evening my stock has finished in the instant pot let it cool down um and now i'm just gonna strain it with just a strainer and this bowl and I'll oh, put it in these jars, which I freeze the stock in. So the jars I use have like a faint line here. Um, I fill it up to there to allow the liquid room to expand. So when I'm done with making my stock, I then put all of the scraps <laughs> that are left behind in my food waste. I'm lucky where I live that my local council collects um, food waste. Make sure you compost your scraps. <laughs> the next thing we're going to make is apple cider vinegar using apple scraps. All the apple scraps I freeze are just skins, cores, anything will do really, it doesn't really matter. And I keep them in the freezer in this 
old peanut butter pot until I'm ready to make apple cider vinegar. So the first thing um, you need to do is sterilize everything. I use boiling water to sterilize everything. So for this, I'm gonna be using two glass jars and then I'll be using some more of that cheesecloth which I use for oat milk. Some rubber bands, I just picked these up either off the street, give them a wash or when we get fruit and veg, they just all go in this ball. And you'll also need a cup measurement and just some sugar. So the first thing you wanna do is take your sterilized cup measurement and fill it up with lukewarm water. And we're gonna dissolve one tablespoon over sugar in every cup of warm water. So I usually add the sugar in and then add the water on top. And I've sterilized a chopstick to just give it a stir and make sure that all of the sugar is dissolved before I add all of my apples. So I'm gonna put a cup of apple scraps, maybe more, and see how full it gets. <laughs> you wanna leave a little bit of space at the top. Ideally, if you have something ceramic that you can put in the top of the jar to hold the apples down so they don't go moldy, that would be best. But I find that just like monitoring it, um, it turns out okay. I have my two pieces of cloth that are gonna go over the top of the apple cider vinegar. And then we're just gonna put some elastic bands around them. I also just place the jar lids on top of the jars and then you wanna store it in a dark cool place for about three weeks. And then after three weeks, you wanna strain out all of your apples. Place the lid on again and leave it there for two weeks for the second ferment. Um, if you don't do that, it might seem unnecessary if you don't do that. Um, it's the bacteria is still breaking down some sugar, so it's producing carbon dioxide. And I thought that was a pointless process once until I put it in a glass bottle, sealed the bottle, and then I went to go use it. And I kid you not, the bottle basically exploded. And this will be your final product after all of that. I keep it in this. And yeah, it's my homemade apple cider vinegar. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any other videos you want me to make or if you try any of these things and definitely tag me on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. It would really mean a lot. Have a beautiful day. Stay kind and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.